Hey there, Teacher Chanel here. Welcome back to my channel. Um, today I'm going to share, I wanted to do like a pretty laid back style video um, and share, good, good lord, let's get my shirt together, and share with you all um, a little bit of my spiritual journey. I'm just sitting here at my desk and let me get that out of the way. <laughs> I'm sitting here at my desk working and it is legit like 419 in the morning. And so I'm taking a quick break because I need a brain break. And um, I just want to share with you all a little bit of my spiritual journey. Okay, so I've already made a video where I share with you. First of all, I know that I need my microphone on because um, I have 15 foot ceilings and tile floors and um, that's just no bueno. That's why I rarely record in my family area because of the echo. So let me put on my mic in hopes of it being, um, let me stick this up. Y'all, we get we go together. Okay, so let me pull this. I broke um, the little hook piece broke off, but hopefully, all right. So let's do this. Boom. So hopefully, hold on, y'all. So, bleh. hopefully you all can hear me a little bit better. Um, so you guys know that I shared with you recently why I left the church video and if you haven't seen that video i will put it one of these corners up here so you can check it out but i wanted i was um laying in the bed yesterday and i was just kind of reminiscing on some experiences that i've had you know as a kid and even one that i had as an adult so first things first i'm going to go back to my childhood this lighting is horrible like okay but we're grateful for it and then come through in your life. So um, I'm going to take you back to my childhood. So I mentioned in, in the other video, um, why I left the church video, that my mom is very, or was, bless her soul, was very um, spiritual, like super, super connected. And she always told myself and my brothers and, um, you know our children that we all would have this gift um that she had pretty much passed on to us like we can all really see and hear in the spirit uh, which i think that's something that everybody can do you just have to learn to tap into it anyway um so i you know growing up watching my mom and how you know being so in tune affected her you know people would come to her and ask her for advice if they needed some spiritual answers or prayer. My mom had this prayer closet, excuse me, and I was scared to death to go in that closet. I'm so serious. Like this closet didn't have like, you know, any clothes in it, but it had pillows and it was real comfortable, a pillow. I mean, a blanket in there, a Bible. She, you know, took some blessed oil and blessed, and people would go in there for hours and come out and look like they have been in a fight, but not in a bad way, you know, but they make up running, eyes all puffy from crying. And I mean, they would seriously look like they had seen a ghost. And I, would, I was just not about that life. I wouldn't even walk, I didn't even wanna walk past the closet. Like I was just scared to death, but apparently it was a closet of miracles and it was some sort of portal you know, this is my words, uh, some sort of portal between, you know, that closet and, and heaven, I, I don't know. But um, I, I was super afraid of this closet because I'm like, I don't want to look like these people that come up out of here. So, <laughs> so um, that's that. And then, you know, when my brother had moved out of the house, I was about, I want to say 12-ish. <sighs> Um, and you know, we had a pretty large home and um, he had the largest bedroom. So when he moved out, I took over his room because then I was the last, you know, child at home. 
Actually, I wasn't, but you know, I was able to take his room. So, um, my brother, let's see, how should I put this? My brother is like super gifted as it relates to like, you know, seeing it. Like my brother knows the Bible inside, flip it around, you know, reverse the words. Like he is so, so good. He knows the Bible. And because of that, he experienced a lot of what, you know, some would call spiritual attacks. And it's like that energy, like he would deal with a lot in that room, like a lot. And so that energy kind of was, it was still there. Like I didn't know about Sage at 12 years old, you know, <laughs> I didn't know nothing about that. So, you know, the energy was still there. And so then I started to experience some of the things that I'm assuming that he had experienced. And one of the things, uh, what do they call it? You know, like when you're asleep, like sleep paralysis, or some people say, you know, the, was it the witch riding your back or something like that, where you're basically laying and you can't move, but you can hear and you can halfway see, but for the life of you, you can't move. Now, some people will say, you know, some people say that it's you coming back into your body after astral project, pro, after astral, how do you, Lord, come on, after, after uh, astral projecting is what I'm trying to say, Lord, come on words. So I didn't know what the hell astral projection was until I watched Black Panther, but I'm gonna get to that. So um, anyway, so I don't really know what it was, but I do know that it was super, super scary, right? And I started to experience this way too much I could feel it coming on I'm like oh here we go it kind of got me between you know being that in between stage of being awake and sleep like that stage right here where you're kind of still halfway conscious I don't know if they call that alpha, alpha state or is it beta state one of them states you know where you somewhat conscious but not really but I could feel it like I could feel the energy and I was like oh not again it was it was it, you know it's scary not being able to move and have control right so i it had gotten so bad that um i looked lopsided <laughs> that i started sleeping on the sofa uh, which was you know right next to my mom's room so i started sleeping in the living room because she was like girl you too old to be sleeping in my room because i used to sleep in her bed and so i was like super old and then um she put me out but I needed to be as close to my mom as possible because I felt like she was my protector. And um, at the same time, I didn't really know how to tell her what I was experiencing because at 12, I don't know what the hell I'm, I don't know what this is, nor do I know how to art articulate it. So it pretty much, I pretty much kept it to myself, but I would experience that. Um, I would also see like apparition, Apparition, is that the right word? Not really like form, energy forms, like that look like people. Not so much that, but just more like apparitions, I think is the right word, like clouds, right? I would see that and, it, and I knew it wasn't good, you know, it was like dark, dark, dark energy. And um, so I never really knew how to tell my mom that. And I remember being at my best friend's house and she was not at home, she was at work, but um, I had become really close to her sister and her brother, so I was in her brother's room, I was laying on the bed, he was on his computer playing a video game, and he had his earphones on, and so some kind of way I semi-dozed off. Remember, I'm still in that in-between state. I semi-dozed off, and I you know, feel this energy again. So it wasn't just attached to the house, it was attached to me. And so I'm laying there, I'm like, oh shit. You know, it, like it comes on so quick that I can't really like wake myself up, you know? And so I'm laying there and I could see like this red, I just remember it being like a red, like bright red face. And it was, you know, like right here, you know? Even though I, my eyes were, my eyes at this point weren't closed. I, I, in my head, they were open. 
and I could see like this image, you know, and I'm, you know, I can't really move my body, but I can move my eyes. And so I'm looking over trying to get Courtney's attention and it in my head, I'm screaming, you know, I want him to wake me up, shake me or something, but he was so into that dog on video game. And so I just thought quick. And I remember my mom saying, you know, anytime, you know, anything, any bad energy is around you just to say Jesus in your head. And so that's what I started to do. And this energy left. So there came a point, um, I don't remember exactly when, but that this just stopped happening. Thank you, Lord. Right. So um, fast forward, I think I want to fast forward to when I was, this was like 2000. I want to say two or three or something like that. So it's been a whole lot of years. So I mentioned Black Panther a couple of minutes ago. So, you know, we all went Black Panther, Wakanda forever. We all went to support the Black Panther movement. We all went to see the movie. And, you know, T'Challa was, you know, when he they were trying to bring him back and he was talking to his dad in like this beautiful garden. I didn't realize that he was actually astral projecting until I was watching Infinite Waters and he mentioned it. And I was like, is that what he was doing? Look, I'm so asleep. I'm thinking I'm woke. Child, I'm still taking a nap, honey, because I didn't know that that was astral projecting. Now, you know, that was a puzzle piece. So then like, you know, maybe four or five months ago, I was watching really old clips here on YouTube of the Montel Williams show. Now, if you don't know who Montel Williams is, it was a talk show that was on for like 20 years or something like that. And you, he used to have this psychic on by the name of Sylvia Brown. And um, so I was watching these clips. I've always been really intrigued by the supernatural, paranormal, psychics. And, you know, I think a lot of them are full of crap, but I do believe that's a, a real gift. So I was watching these clips. And that's why I learned about the whole sleep paralysis thing being you coming back into your body from astral projection. And so I took that, you know, that light bulb went off and it connected to the, um, what Infinite Waters Ralph was talking about, um, astral projecting. So I was like, oh my gosh, that's what happened to me way back in the early 2000s. Um, I had... I was, it was a Sunday evening after church. We come home, we ate, the kids were taking a nap and I was laying down to take a nap. I'm back in the in-between weird stage. And next thing you know, I am legit floating in the left-hand corner of my bedroom. And I'm looking down onto the bed and I see me laying on the bed. So I'm like, okay, am I gone? Like, is this it? Like, what's going on? So, you know, I don't remember falling asleep. I just remember being, you know, kind of, you know, halfway out of it, but not sleep. And the next thing I know, I'm floating in the, <laughs> in the corner of the ceiling. And I'm like, yo, I don't like the way this feels. So I'm willing myself, I'm sitting up here, floating rather, I'm floating up here and I'm looking down on my body and I'm like trying to, you know, in my, like, telepathically tell my body to wake up and 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 so um on the bed i started shaking because i needed my spirit whatever that was floating spirit essence soul i needed it back i, I want it back because I, I didn't sign up for this i don't know what's going on this is not cute this is not a cute feeling it feels very weird so i just started shaking my body and eventually I woke up and I'm like, what the heck just happened? So um, I feel like I told this story before. I don't know if I did or not. But anyway, um, so then I went to church. I think it was the following Sunday and I spoke to my bishop and I was like, yo, this is what happened. And he started laughing and he was like, oh, you had an out of body experience. That's what I have always 
you know, heard this type of exper experience referred to as an outer body experience and not so much astral projection, <laughs> astral projecting. My braces won't let me be great. I can't say certain things. So anyway, so he was like, yeah, well, you had an outer body experience and he thought it was funny. And I was like, but why? What does the Bible say about, you know, these experiences? And I think he laughed it off because he didn't know what the hell to tell me, you know, like he didn't know. So um, that pretty much scared the hell out of me. And um, I still to this day don't really understand why it happened i know that some people here on youtube they like intentionally do it um but it, it starts to make sense because you know when i have dreams at night most often i don't remember them but there are those dreams that i wake up from and it's like i was there and i'm pretty sure we've all I'm pretty sure we've all had those experiences where we wake up and you're like, oh my God, that was so real, right? And so the theory is, is that it's because it was real and you were actually astral projecting. Now, this isn't something that I am ready to do, I don't think, like on purpose, but I do find it intriguing. And there are people who say, you know, um, that they met on the astral plane like if I wanted to connect with somebody that I haven't necessarily met in real life but like how do you like one of my favorite artists is Usher like and, and listen I don't need the herpes jokes in the comments like don't go there um, but I've, I've been a huge fan of Usher for a really long time so for example there are people who say that they can meet like they say oh god come on my like it's a possibility for me to go and meet usher on the astral plane right and we ride around and chill and do whatever like how do people do that part how do you like go to sleep and and do you have to call the person up and say, hey, we're going to meet on the astral plane tonight? Like, how do you meet people and actually remember who you met and hung out with on that? Somebody let me know. Somebody who has experience with this sort of thing, you know, let me know. Because that, that's the part that, like, baffles me. Like, how do you intentionally project and meet? certain people that's what i want to know so anyway so the last story that i want to tell you all oh my gosh i must have been um well it's not the last story so let's just stay with the whole dream thing like my dreams being super vivid and that's how for the longest time would i you know interpret as god speaking to me he spoke to me in my dreams now, I've already made videos on this, you know, me seeing numbers and finding feathers every dog on wear. Um, that's like the mode of communication for the most part now. But I still have dreams and I always have had dreams. Like all of my kids, I knew what their genders were going to be before I even was far long enough to have an ultrasound. So I have eight year old twins and, um, you know, I actually thought I was miscarrying with them but I wasn't um and once I you know the doctor told me you know you're spotting because it's implantation bleeding and not so much for a miscarriage or signs of a miscarriage so I was maybe like eight weeks maybe 10 weeks along you know that's too early like I didn't find out what they were until I think it was like 18 weeks but I had a dream I had a dream of a little boy and a little girl, babies, and the little boy had this really old man face, like a little baby, but he looked really old in the face. And that's exactly, um, you know, my twins are a boy and a girl, and my son for probably the first two or three months of their life, he looked really old, like he looked like he had been here before. 
And um, and then, you know, my, I had my first child when I was 15 years old, and I had vowed to not have any more children until I was married, and I kept that. But when she was maybe two months old, I had a dream. And in this dream, we were walking in the park. There was a little girl next to me who appeared to be about five years old. And then I was pushing a stroller. And I remember leaning over and, you know, trying to, who the heck is this I'm pushing and who is this person next to me, right? So I leaned over and it was another little girl in the stroller. And five years later, my, my oldest daughter, Cece, was five years old and I had my second daughter, Mariana. So, um, and then with my last, I have six children total, and then with my last little girl, she's four now, but again, you know, spotting, I thought I was going to miscarry. I had some type of condition, I can't remember what the heck it was called, but basically it's where you have the uterine wall and the placenta attaches to the uterine wall, right? This is ghetto. Um, anatomy and physiology or reproduction right <laughs> so you have your uterine wall and the placenta and it typically attaches where there was a blood clot like so this is no we're gonna make a stir the starburst the blood clot clot right so there was a blood clot here represented by the starburst and so the spotting came from not only the implantation but this blood clot that was bleeding and you know i was threatening a miscarriage because this blood clot could have broken off and taken the placenta i.e the baby with it thankfully that is not what happened so um you know i went to the er again thinking i was miscarrying thank the lord i've never had a miscarriage but i was thinking i was miscarrying and the doctor was like no you're well at the er yeah they were super rude they were like yeah you're, you're gonna lose the baby tough luck, whatever. But then I went to see a, an actual OB and he did some tests. He was like, oh, this is no big deal. You know, 80% of women deal with this and don't even know it. She'll be fine. So then I had a dream. I don't remember how far along I was, but I had a dream of this really light skinned little girl with these thick, super thick ponytails. And, um, you know, that was just, you know, God's way of letting me know that she's going to be fine. And that's exactly, she's a girl, um, super light. People don't even believe she's mine. And she has this really thick, long hair. It goes all the way to her tailbone. So, um, you know, I've always had like super vivid dreams when I can remember them. They're very vivid. And there's usually some, some information in there. Um, so the last thing that I wanted to tell you all is I must have, oh gosh, I don't remember. It was pre, it was before I had my baby, my first child. So I had to been maybe mm, 12 or 13 again, like spiritually speaking. Oof. Like between the age of about 11 and 14 like the spiritual activity around me was super heavy so i'm thinking we were maybe i want to say 13. i want to say 13. i was at my grandma's house and um you know standing in the kitchen it was like a, a little bitty they call them sharpshooter houses um like little rectangles right they were where you could stand in the front door and and look straight through the and see the back door type of house so we're standing in the kitchen and my cousin, blood relative, um, was cleaning chitlins and we were just all kind of just talking or whatever. We were all like really young. And um, I remember looking up, well, I caught out the side of my eye something standing in the doorway of one of the bedrooms. And, you know, I had a cousin that was, I was right next to one of my blood relatives. She was at the sink and I was kind of leaning, you know, on the cat, on the counter. And then my other relative was um, leaning on the stove. And then the other one was closer to the refrigerator. And right next to the refrigerator is this doorway to this bedroom. So I have to look this way to kind of map it out in my head. And so I knew where everybody was, 
And so at the corner of my eye, I see this person, this, um, not person, but spirit, like standing in the doorway. And he had on like this, re he was dressed like he was from the early 1900s. And he was, you know, a brown person. And uh, he had on like this black suit and this top hat, you know, like uh, like the mu musicians have on that they pull a rabbit out of. I remember that top hat. And I was like, do y'all see that? And so clearly we all saw it because we ran like hell. <laughs> and this is pre-cell phone day. So all we could do is run outside of the house and just wait. And I was like, man, I just need to get to the phone so I can call my mama, this some bull. And we went back in, he was gone. And so none of us, I mean, we didn't, I got the best look at him because I saw him first and, you know, that initial shock. And you're like, wait a minute, am I seeing what I'm think I'm what I think I'm seeing? And then you got to get confirmation from everybody else in the room, and we just all ran like hell. Okay, um, so I saw him the longest. Still don't really know who that person is. At first, I thought it was my um, oh yeah, child. That's a whole nother story. At first, I thought it was the man that you know we thought was my mom's father scandal um but it you know i see there was a picture that my of, of my grandma and him so i was like it it kind of looked like him but it was he was kind of see-through so i don't really know if that was him or not and you know i explained explained to my mom like what he and my mom was like well why what did you stay why didn't y'all stay and see what he wanted i'm like that's your thing <laughs> not my thing I wanted to get the hell up out of there so um still to this day don't really know who that person was um because when I explained it to my mom she was like you know well he passed when my mom was a little like a baby um but like my grandma she was like yeah that's not something that he ever wore but here's what I later found out is that in that particular oh i'm losing my mic oh crap Ooh. lord we're gonna get it together i need to get another for this thing. so the clip another clip all right so um where was i Dang, I lost my train of thought. But we didn't really know who, oh, I found out that in that particular room that they used to hold funerals in that room. Now what y'all got going on up in here? Like they, I mean like my grandma and you know, like the old, like prior to like my mom being born and stuff, they would have like funerals in that room. So I kind of think my family's low key, like was in some things, but I can't prove it. And I think my mom knew, but she didn't really want to tell me cause she know I'm scary. That's why she like, listen, you can't handle it. So anyway, those are just some of, I mean, listen, I didn't even scratch the surface. That's just some of the stuff that I've experienced in my spiritual journey part of me really wants to like explore it more but then nope mm -mm. i don't want to because i don't have my mom here to like protect me <laughs> i feel like you know you know i don't have her to like ask like what the hell you know to interpret for me because there's a lot of things that took place back in the day um that i really didn't understand and so mm -mm, mm -mm, i don't want to do that but what I've come to learn last, okay, oh, oh my God, I'm sorry. I keep saying I'm done, I'm done, I'm done. But I'm trying to, like, you know, just really share my spiritual experiences with you all, all in one video. Maybe I shouldn't do this, but okay. So last year, this is how I know, how I found out that I am what I call energetically sensitive. Now, some people will say, use the word intuitive. I don't really know a whole lot about what 
defines an intuitive. So I'm gonna just roll with um, energetically sensitive. So last year I really got into crystals. Like I have a bunch of crystals over there. I have this crystal, this is selenite. Um, it is a pr protect, pr y'all my word, a protection stone. And it also gets rid of um, bad energy. So um, yeah, that's my crystal that I wear. Y'all see me wear this often. Um, you know on my videos or whatever so I was really interested in crystals I mean I had a lot of crystals still do and at this particular point this particular day I was um I had crystals in my bra I'm that girl I think I had like pyrite and um I would walk over there and get it but I'm attached with the mic and everything I think I had pyrite and oh crap i think i had like three different stones i don't remember quartz pyrite and maybe green avertorine avertorine i don't know how to pronounce it something like that so i had these three stones in my bra right and um this is before we moved here y'all know i told y'all the story about how we manifested this place but um this is when i was on the hunt and i was looking for an apartment yes so um, we had gone into these apartments and or to this community, this brand new apartment community. Um, I think people had only been living there like two weeks, right? So most of the apartments were still under construction or newly finished. So we looked at three units. The third unit that we went into, I started to feel really weird and um what i've learned is that a lot of the energy like if there's some extra energy around me that kind of latches on to me it manifests by way of a panic attack because i really don't have prior to last year i'd never i'm thinking i never had a panic attack before anxiety never really dealt with that um but you know we we're walking around in this apartment and i just started to feel really heavy is the only way I know how to explain it and heavy yet lightheaded at the same time like he heavy and kind of woozy like I was going to pass out type of feeling and um, I kept saying that you know something is not right something is not right something is weird in this apartment I don't know what's going on it's a brand new unit but we know that energies can still be attached to the land or maybe it was an energy of one of the, the construction workers I don't know but the energy was jacked and even my friend who I was with she was like you know she she could physically see that my whole demeanor had changed I'm usually a very goofy person I always you know making corny jokes and um very outgoing but she looked at me and she was like what's wrong with you like you were just fine a second ago and now you look weird like like can you imagine me being pale like a brown person being pale um yeah that happens so as soon as we got back outside i felt like i could you know inhale again like I could breathe again but something was really really weird about that particular unit and you know even though I felt a lot better after we had gotten outside that energy kind of stayed with me for like a few days so I really think that having those crystals in my bra kind of heightened the experience and strengthened so for those of you who's, who are like yeah crystals are just rocks they don't do anything. They don't carry any energy or anything. Lies. Okay. Because I don't know that I would have necessarily experienced that on that level if it weren't for them doggone crystals in my bra. And I refuse. I don't wear crystals in my bra anymore. I'll just wear my little, my uh, selenite. But this is a protection stone and it wears a bad energy child. So this is the only one I roll with you know, on my person because otherwise I'm going to be picking up on too many people's energy at one time and it's not cute. So, God dog that I keep hitting that. You will ah. pay off of the point amount. Seriously though, I did a webinar 
for an income opportunity in the recording. I keep hitting my laptop over here and it keeps playing. So um, anyway, I think that I'm going to, I have a few more of these necklaces left. I actually made this. Um, and what I think I'm going to do is, or I have more of the selenite wands left. And I think what I'm going to do, because I don't need that much selenite, is I'm going to create a few more necklaces. So if you're interested in that, I'll put some direction down below. I don't know if they'll be on my website when I, when I post this, or um, if they are, I'll put a link down below. If they're not, I will give you instruction to email me. If you're interested in one of these, and I think what I'm going to do is um, couple this with some sage. Um, some beautiful white sage because by this being a protection stone and it wards off that energy and sage pretty much does the same thing. I think I'm going to couple the two together and, um, you know, sell them, offer them to you all. So if that's something that you're interested in, just check the, check the description to either email me or click the link so you can order. But I can tell you there are only going to be like maybe six available. I think I only have like six or seven ones left. Um, so if you want it, get it. But this is really, I just love it. And then I wear my key here. Y'all see me with this on. This key has um, significant meaning, but I'm not going to share what it means just yet until it actually comes to pass. Um, but in the future, I will share with you why I wear this key. Um, but yeah, if you want one of these, just check down below. Um, yeah, so that is my crazy spiritual um, journey thus far. Um, I just thought that I would share. So let's start the conversation. Y'all know that I like to chit chat down in the um, the comment section or you can shoot me an email if it's something that you want to share that's a little too personal of course that'll be in the description but let me know if you experience if you've like seen like ghosts or aspir aspirations apparitions or um if you've experienced any of that if you like crystal like just whatever i talked about if you've experienced it please let me know down below. Thank you all so much for watching and staying to the end. You are the real MVP. Like if you watch this whole 30 plus minute long video, how about y'all put, I don't know about you all with the Androids. I don't, you know, I don't know what type of emojis y'all have, but the iPhones, we have the, the uh, meditating little girl. Like if you, I'm assuming they have a guy too, but if you made it this far, comment down below with that meditating um, emoji. Let me know that you are the real MVP, that you sat here and watched me this whole time. So subscribe if you haven't already. Give this video a thumbs up and turn on the notification bell. I do plan, out pump, plan on pumping out a lot of content here over the next few weeks. So you definitely want to be informed and notified as soon as things come up or the videos are posted. I don't know what I'm talking about, y'all. It is five o'clock. So my words are starting to leave me. So anyway, y'all, I will talk to you all in the next video. If you have any requests, please let me know. Um, I like requests and I try to always um, respond to the request right away. So anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. I love you and I will talk to you all in the next one.